In this D Natural Blues West Montgomery guitar lesson, I'm going to show you this amazing melody from the album called The Incredible Jazz Guitar of West Montgomery. I'm going to show you the D Natural Blues melody just like it's played on the record. I'll play it using octaves. I'll show you the sheet music and tabs on the screen, highlighting the notes as I play them. And I'll demonstrate it twice, once at the tempo that West Montgomery played it, then again at a slower tempo so it's easier to watch or play along with if you want to. After that, I'll talk about what makes the D Natural Blues melody so good. I'll also talk about how I practice something like this to really get it down. This melody from D Natural Blues is a fantastic example of West Montgomery's octave technique. Be sure to check out my video on how to get started playing with octaves on the guitar if you want some help with this style. Let's dive in. Here's the full demonstration of the D natural blues melody using octaves at 92 beats per minute. Two, three, four. <laughs> Here it is again, much slower at 60 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. So what makes this melody so amazing? Other than it's played by amazing musicians, the technique, the feel, the execution is all fantastic. But what about just the composition of the melody itself? Let's look at the phrasing of the composition. I have a bunch of other lessons on phrasing that can really help with composing or improvisation. Check those out if you would like to. So we have a very simple starting statement. And then we repeat that exact statement with an extra note added in and on the other chord. So the first statement fits perfectly with D7. It's the fifth, the root, and the flat seven of D7. The second statement, the reaction to it, um, fits over G7 with the same chord tones. This is the five, this is the flat seven, this is the root. Um, so just rhythmically repeating the same thing is huge and then also doing it um, on the next harmony but fitting on the same chord tones is a very powerful thing to do. So let's just say that we have this statement as A. Da -da 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 -da. That's A. That's A again. Okay, we can say that that is kind of like a B. And then this kind of is A again. Interesting, A, A, B, A. But it's kind of hidden in there. That B just plays through. Boom. And then that's very much like that's kind of like A A B A, where that B is just this kind of contrasting melody. So very structured, and that last A, and you can label them whatever you want, but we have a concluding idea that is coming back to what we played in the very first idea. And if we can keep track of what we're playing enough, react, react, react to what we're playing, um, that is what makes our playing, whether we're improvising or composing, what makes it sound designed, compositional, and um, expressive. So let's move on to the next part of the melody. So we start a new idea here. Okay, so we have two kind of ideas. One that is the initial idea, the other one reacts to it. Now we're going to kind of play variations of that 
Just kind of ending the same idea, but starting it slightly differently. Whether you're starting an idea the same and ending it slightly differently, or starting an idea differently and ending it the same, these are amazing ways to create variation and have it feel like you're building and having a conversation and actually saying something. The next part is kind of like a question and answer statement or call and response. It's like, that's not really concluding on its own, right? Okay, now. Okay, that answers it. And it, this is on the five of the overall key on A. It ends on, on the five. And then ends on the one. So very much a call and response question and answer kind of phrasing. And that final phrase. I'd say that's kind of like a coda almost. It's almost like an afterthought. I think it was pretty much a conclusion. And then that, that last thing is kind of like a celebration. It's like a little dance in the end zone. Very odd, actually, to end on this uh, G note for the entire melody, but it, it works as this kind of final celebration of a statement. So it's very powerful to consider the phrasing when there's something you really like the feel of and the sound of, to just say, how how is this reacting to itself? There's really not a right or wrong way to interpret that. You just It's just looking at it closer. Like, oh, interesting, this was the same rhythm as this. Oh, interesting, four bars later, it concluded the idea it started four bars ago. You know, stuff like that will help immensely with understanding what's going on with the music that we love. And if you want to really internalize something that you love, just make sure you're playing it in, in as many ways as you can. In this case, definitely play it with octaves as well as without octaves, because you'll get a different feel for it and a deeper understanding of it. That goes the same with playing things in different keys and positions and whatnot. But in this case, just octaves and without octaves, you'll, you'll understand it that much better. When I play without octaves, I get a different, it feels like it has a different flavor, a little more bluesy to me. <laughs> noticed that when I was playing it along with the sheet music, some things weren't exactly as they're written. And I just want to emphasize that we should always go to the source when we're learning something like this. If you can, if there is a source, if there's a recording that it came from, that is the real deal, the real original recording, work with that as much as possible. So when I played along with Wes Montgomery, when I really over and over tried to get exactly his phrasing, that's where some of those differences came from, exactly where I'm sliding into the notes. That's not written in, in, a lot, in the sheet music in most places, but I'm sliding into all the notes where Wes Montgomery sl slid into the notes, and I'm playing staccato short notes everywhere where he's playing staccato short notes just because of listening and trying to absorb exactly his feel and his phrasing and his execution and his accents and everything like that. So I can't emphasize that enough. The sheet music that you might find somewhere could be very close and could really help but go to the source and go to the recording and play along with the original where whenever you can. If I were to work on improvising over this so I could solo over it after playing the melody, the first thing I always do in jazz changes especially is make sure that I can improvise strictly with chord tones. I mean the melody, those are just chord tones of D7 and G7 as I already said. So I wanna make sure that I can play something I like just with chord tones and then start to add scale notes and chromatic notes from there like three, four, one, two, three, four, one. This is D7. This is G7. Back to D7, etc. So I map all of those out and make sure I can connect them in one position. I have a free download that is every chord tone shape in five positions of all 12 chords that you would need to map out and do this, to be able to do this over any chord in any jazz progression. A very great resource, just a PDF of all of the physical chord tone shapes, exactly like what I was using right there. And if you get that, I'll send you a video too of some examples of how to work on it. You can download that totally for free. There's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. So I demonstrated this with my thumb strumming down because that's what Wes Montgomery does, and I wanted to get that sound, but I very rarely play octaves that way. I usually play just with my fingers or with hybrid picking 
working with the pick and then my fingers. So to work on this, to teach it in this video, um, I practiced in a certain kind of way to make sure that I could demonstrate it for you. And that is my uh, practice approach for how I work on getting anything down that is extremely effective. So I want to recommend that you watch that video next because it applies to anything you ever want to practice and it truly works and it's really amazing. So it's just how to practice most effectively to get anything down. I'll put a link to that video in the description, but I'll also pop a link on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube so you can just click on that and go straight to it. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson is on a solo guitar arrangement of Brahms Lullaby, that famous lullaby melody. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.